I apologize, but it didn't rhyme with better. <laughs> Christmas sweater, better. Anyway, we're live. Nice. What's up, guys? Sean Bowen, Full Circle Investment Group, and WholesalingOutOfTheBox.com. Back at it again for another lunchtime live with the Christmas jacket. Woo -woo. What's up, guys? Uh, so, Christmas time, it's jacket time, man. I don't know if we're going to be able to have as many uses of them this year, but man, I like these things. These are fun. So anyway, um, getting here today talking about what it's like dealing with buyers uh, and how that transaction goes down and what should be expected. What are you giving those guys as a line of direction that here's how you operate as a company, here's what you do, here's who to expect to be contacting you, here's the all things included in order to close this transaction, right? So let's talk about what that looks like. Guys, as you're coming on here today, please, if you would, uh, click that link above. Let us know where you're coming in from, where you're hearing this recording at or this live broadcast. And um, if you're watching the replay, let us know if there's anything that you felt different during this talk or maybe you see different that maybe you use and you do in your business that you can share with us um, that maybe helps you. I and mean, Maybe we can learn from you as well. So guys, talking about dealing with buyers, right? You've already gone through the vetting process. You've gone through what it looks like to get a proof of funds, know who they are, know what they buy, um, really get into a good conversation and start building that relationship of how you're going to work with each other in the future, right? Now you've gotten past that, a deal goes out, they're interested, they go out and now they want to put paperwork together, okay? So this is where we're gonna be submitting our AOC, our assignment of contract. And <clears throat> the process that we use is actually, there's an app um, that submits all of our information has where people can submit their information to us so that we can see it. And it asks, you know, what you're buying in, what your closing date is, what contingencies you want in there. Do you agree to the EMD that has to be deposited at our attorney's office? Have you inspected the property? And all of this in order to move forward to build the paperwork, right? Or build that assignment contract. So now we're going to put that together. We're going to send it over to them and then they're going to sign via whatever electronic signature company. Okay. So now what does that look like? What kind of paperwork do they want? Right? So if we are dealing with a true cash buyer, majority of the time you get something in between like maybe five days, seven days that they had an inspection done, but they want to do a termite and moisture inspection. Uh, maybe you get somebody that says they want to, uh, oh, septic and well, that's an issue for them, right? They want to get it inspected. Um, so seven to about 10 days should be the norm, should be acceptable. Um, what other contingencies do you have inside of it or inside of that paperwork that they want? For us, we don't allow assignments, right? So our contract specifically states that you are not allowed to assign this paperwork unless otherwise agreed to by us, right? The, the reason for that is, is we don't want the daisy chain game. Right. If they're going to close, they're the end buyer, then let's do it that way. If you're going to be an assigner or if you're going to be a wholesaler, then let's have that talk because it's totally different from the end buyer talk. So <clears throat> what else is in that paperwork? Right. We've already got the proof of funds. The next part is the EMD. The EMD says we want twenty five hundred dollars to be non refundable based on we can't clear title. Otherwise, if it's on them as the end buyer, that's not on us. We will clear title. We will have the property vacant for you to buy it. And of course, you'll get a title, title insurance policy on that. Otherwise, there should not be any other major contingencies, right? We've already hurdled the, the issue of the inspection. If they do come back with a problem with termite and moisture, well, let's address it, right? Um, bear with us, we got World War Three going over us. my window of my office today. Um, so now that we've gotten past all that and we've agreed to close, right? So now we're moving towards closing. Everything's been hurdled. We're good to go. And then for whatever reason, right up to the last moment or the 11th hour, the buyer says they cannot close, right? So now we're going to get into this discussion of what is it like to keep the EMD? Because more than likely, it was on their end and at their control, maybe they went dark on us, maybe they lost their funding, whatever it was, but that goes back to the original statement of, are we keeping your EMD? That's at our discretion, right? We are not here to collect EMDs. We're here to close business and make the bigger paycheck, right? So 
if there's something that was done in between that transaction where they weren't open with you and they didn't keep in connection with you, well, then you need to have that talk, right? But this is another important piece of this that could come up when you're doing these closings. At the very last minute, your buyer does a 180 on you and whatever happens, happens, right? There needs to be that conversation. If they're talking with you and keeping in connection with you and <clears throat> making it so that there's there's no disconnect, then fine. Let's Let's not keep it. But if they ghost you and you don't respond to emails, you don't respond to text messages and you just drag your feet and then you want to fight us for it, well, then we have a problem, right? But this is all what the paperwork does to protect that. So this is a, a big piece of this, guys. Understanding the buyers that you're working with, truly vetting them on the front end so that you're having a, a good relationship to start building on, right? What does it look like to have those people um, Make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to on the front end of the thing, right? Getting to know each other is huge so that when you get to this point of sending paperwork, right, you can, because in your assignment, it'll have what you're going to make, right? It'll say your fee. So if you haven't gotten that discussion out of the way of, doesn't really matter our number as long as your numbers work, you don't want that to pop up on you, right? Because that could be something they were using to negotiate against you with. Oh, I see you making $20,000, you know, I can only pay $10,000 less because I see that, right? Let's get all that out of the way ahead of time. Let's understand that we're marketing for these. We're doing the work that it takes to find them so that we can bring these guys um, true deals, right? So you as the wholesaler want to make sure you get that conversation out of the way. The other part of this is now that closing's gone down, right? And the transaction's complete. What do you do to make sure that you're keeping a good relationship with that buyer. Ours is a simple little thank you card, right? Thank you for doing business with us. Um, look forward to doing the next deal with you. That's a connection with your buyer, right? Um, for us, it, it's very important to have this relationship with the end buyers as well as we are the end buyers on some deals. But I want that relationship, right? I want somebody to come to us and talk to us and say, thank you, we appreciate it, or keep in contact about the next deal. Guys, remember, this is a nurturing relationship. This is a long-term play. You're going to be doing business with these people time and time again. So it should be as simple as making a phone call or sending out a flyer on a text message, right? So five, six, maybe 10 of your main buyers that the deal's gone. It can be gone super fast because they know that you have a good relationship and that the deal works because you've gotten past all of the BS that's in the marketplace, right? This is a craft that you have to hone in on. This is a very important piece of this business that a lot of people don't talk about in the you know guru world or teach you real estate world. So <clears throat> this is something that's important to take the time to build out as well as the, the rapport built with sellers is the rapport built with buyers. So it's very important to have that open dialogue, that conversation that, you know, hey, I can come to you and ask a question and not have a problem with it, right? Or the buyer comes to you and says, hey, I can't do this because something popped up and out of my control, you know, I can't close, I need like an extra three days. So you have a relationship, you know that they're not trying to pull out completely, something might have happened, maybe a closing, they're waiting for money to come from one deal to the next, like all this is very normal stuff. So you really wanna take the time to build that relationship with your buyers so that you understand what you guys are gonna do to move forward, how you're gonna move forward, right? And how it makes it a very good relationship to continue, like the next person that you go to find that could be a new buyer to your list and have that same SOP, right? That same standard operating procedure that goes into any buyer that you work with. So this is something, guys, that you need to take the time to, to build on, really deep dive and learn how to do because it will help you in the long run. We have a, a list of maybe 200 people on our list. I can tell you about six I know we can send a text to and know the deal will be gone if it's a, if it's a good deal that they normally buy at, right? So again, guys, Thank you for taking the time to join us today. I um, appreciate you taking the time to listen to this replay. If you're listening to this on an audio or a, or a podcast or anything like that. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. You can catch us at wholesalingoutofthebox.com. Um, also, don't forget this week, this Friday, uh, we will be having the same discussion, very deep dive. Um, you can join us virtually or you can join us in person. This will be in Norfolk. 
And um, we're going to be there for about two hours talking about all this kind of stuff. So if you would, uh, check us out over there at wholesalingoutofthebox.com over on events page. And uh, grab a ticket and join us. I look forward to meeting you either in the virtual world or in person. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. And as usual, thanks again.